Hello, Nawa Florida artists. Today is May the 31st, 2023. We are very fortunate and proud to have Susan Irish, a, a distinguished artist, and she's a member of the North Carolina membership, I believe, committee. Uh, she chairs it. And she's an instructor, she's an, a designer, she has a lot of titles, a, a, a teach, an art teacher. So uh, today she will be explaining her vision, how she's inspired by art, how she works in a multimedia, I would say, and um, landscapes mostly, uh, showing signs of creeping industrial blight. And she appreciates the beauty of nature and tries to show it in her work, which is the media that she chooses is oil, wax, amongst others. And for her, art making is integral to the human and should be fostered and celebrated. I want to let you know that her webpage is fabulous. You can see her colorful works. And I encourage you to check it out after the presentation if you haven't done so yet. And please um, find out, you know, we will post the social media, which we did on the Zoom call. So try to uh, follow her on the social media. And uh, this way we are supporting all of our fellow artists and we can network with them. So Susan, thank you very much for doing this presentation. We're looking forward to seeing this right now. And you, she's welcoming people to uh, unmute at any moment and ask questions as she is doing the presentation. So feel free to interject with your questions. And with you, Susan Irish. Thank you, thank you all for being here. I'm gonna pop onto the presentation and we have a second to get it ready so I don't lose you. There we go. So you can all see that, yes? Not yet. Um, you have to click it to say share. Can you hit the share button? Okay, let's see, let's try this one more time. Share that. Share that. Go. Go here. Turn and share. And go here. There, there you go. go. How's Perfect. That? Perfect. So, I think that as artists, we are often challenged to reinvent ourselves. But I thought that was really too long of a title for a slideshow. So, I changed it to this the mark I make because I'm a mark maker in my art. And this slide to the right is for the first time in my 40 years of making art, I'm going to have a real brand. And it's based on my mark. The mark on the left is a, from a sketchbook and I actually make that mark. Quite often when I'm activating a canvas, when I'm doodling, it's from my initials as a child. That's how I, I couldn't do the cursive. I had to print them all out. So this is this is this is my my mark. Um, I want to tell you the story of my life about reinventing myself over and over again, and and how I've made a mark in in the world. I thought that this is a little more concise title, and I'll break it down into little chapters. And if you have some questions at the end of each little chapter, I'll let you know I'm, I'm done with that section and we can go back in and, and answer some questions. Teacher and you never goes away. So this is an exemplar of the body of my work. I call it seven days and it's seven paintings done each day with the trash that I generated that day. It's part of my mission to paint mother nature as if she's a real person and protect her and advocate for her. So here's some close up where you can see some of the trash. I'm not trying to make it an I spy. I'm trying to make it the layers underneath and I'm painting over them, integrating them in 
kind of my way of recycling things that can't be recycled, just working them into the texture of the painting. So here's the trash from that day. These are 16 by 16 inch panels. And I put the trash down with the glue and then covered it up with some gesso and then built up the layers. So after doing this, even for seven days, and then being so acutely aware of my trash, I've been able to kick my Keurig habit. So I don't use <laughs> Keurig, because they're a pain to work into a painting. So uh, this is a study I worked on for a big part of my series called Cautionary Tales. It's a battle between the flowers and the plastic. We're, we're overrun with plastic. And how can I show the impending threat of that? Well, I've got a whole series of, of cautionary tales about battles between flowers and plastic. So if there's any questions about any of that? Any thoughts? Was your intention to have the, the yellow almost looks like bananas? Was that your intention or is that just a coincidence? So this was a, a workshop and we had to do a, an assignment with just the stuff that was there and the little tiny bits of things we had. So I cut up an old book and the, the yellow is actually feathers of parrots and the oh. other and pending doom parts or car parts from another oh, book. Cool. And I didn't like the color blue paint that we had. So I used blue painter's tape as an, as an intentional part of the composition. And it's just a study trying to work something out. Okay. Susan, two questions. Yes. Um, where is the plastic? Because I'm having a hard time seeing it on the screen. And two, what did you use to adhere the feathers onto the uh, support? Okay, so this is just a piece of paper and it's just a study. So it's, it's actually uh, cut out feathers from a magazine. So it's a collage and it's just- Oh, a I study. see, I see. Yeah, just, okay. just a study and, and then eventually I'll do, do something. And here you can see all the plastic underneath it. And you can see up in the upper left-hand corner, I use daily disposable contact lenses and, and I don't have any choice with that. So I'm working the plastic in there and I, I just use a heavy, heavy pH uh, adhesive glue or sometimes I use modeling paste and just squish it right in there. Okay. So these are- Thank you. Yep. Thank you. So this is about my life story here in, in painting. And <clears throat> I struggled in school, which I think is a, is a common tale for a lot of artists. I didn't get the numbers, but when the art teacher said, there's something between red and yellow called orange and between red and orange, there's red, orange and red, red, orange. And, and that I saw, I got it. I, I, mm -hmm. I just I got it. It all made perfect sense for me. Uh, I pursued a career in interior design and I had work published on HGTV. I worked for some famous sports figures in my area at the time I was in Massachusetts. And I worked for a lot of lovely, ordinary people as well. And one day I gave it all up for public education. <laughs> uh, but of course I got to be the art teacher. So it, I got to share with students what was my salvation, what was my joy, what was my way of understanding the world. And I don't brag about myself very often, even though I'm making a whole slideshow about myself today. <laughs> I was a really good teacher. I was a really, really good teacher. And it was, a, it was a very, very good thing for me. And I still occasionally get love letters from my students, which is very, very wonderful. Uh, I'll tell you more about these paintings in a minute. The first one though is encaustic. And this is me in caricature and I found that owl dead on the side of the road and I brought it home with me and I couldn't see it getting run over or pecked up and I put it in my freezer and I was gonna taxidermy it until I realized it's a bird of prey and I'm on a DNR watch list now. So this is me turning into a puppet because I was 
talking the talk, but not walking the walk. And, and a lot of my paintings will feature uh, themes such as that. And, and, and how I can be an advocate by saying, I don't have it all figured out, but I'm doing this and it's making it better. And I'm doing that and it's making it better. So the bird went to live at the bird, Center for Birds of Prey in South Carolina, where I now live, and um, and they use it as a teaching tool, so it makes me feel a little bit better. But that's um, encaustic, and this is encaustic. If a lot of people don't aren't as familiar with it, and uh, if I move, can you see the screen without your faces, or is a face covering yes. up some of the screen? Okay, no, we see so, it. So, uh, so this is melted beeswax and paint pigment and Damar resin makes the beeswax stronger. It goes back to the ancient Egyptians and the ancient Greeks and it's a form of art that's getting a resurgence in the last 10, 15 years. And I got to learn it from one of the masters of it. So I got a great start in it. I loved it. Uh, you can melt the wax, remove it from the surface, paint with it, but as you're painting, it's hardening. So then you manipulate and move it with some heat tools. It's very enthralling, it's very amazing. You can have thousands of colors. Uh, I bought this old Barberware heat pot to make a giant vat of wax. And then I had a smaller vat of can in there melting. And it's just a very, very wonderful, wonderful thing to do. I did portraits, which is really how it started with the funerary mass that the uh, Egyptians and the Greeks would make to bury their dead. The, this is why the um, mummies are so preserved because they've used some beeswax and the, and the ancient Greek funerary paintings, the Fayum paintings were done in the beeswax too. Uh, it's multicolored, you can get transparent layers, you can carve through it. And I loved it. It was one of my favorite things to do. Whoops. This is a piece I've worked on uh, quite a while ago. It's still using the themes of nature, but I'm trying to be more abstract with it. So, so back to here. This sort of sums up a lot of my work. The first one being the nature and the beauty of nature and with a little cautionary tale mixed in. The middle piece is more the dystopian and the last one is the searching for the utopia part of it. Any more explanation on encaustic you might, you might like? Would you consider doing a workshop online with that for Zoom instead of uh, like a, Zoom, a workshop presentation instead of just uh, a presentation? I, I can't, and I'll tell you about that a little bit more. Uh, I don't do this anymore because I have an adverse reaction to it. And it's <laughs> not, it's, it's from overexposure, but also because um, it's just a weird, a weird predisposition I have about it. I, I did this for a very long time. And then finally I got time to do it myself all the time. And, and I was teaching it to some people and I had four or five people in my studio and I thought it was just because there was too much going on. And it made me really, really sick. And I, and I started to go back into do it, back into do it. And, and every time it would be, I would have a respiratory reaction. And I thought it was psychosomatic. You know, we go through these things in art, you know, it just, about, I, I can't do what I want to do. And uh, I did some, some genetic testing for another reason. And they told me one of the oddities in my genetic makeup is I can't be around a campfire smoking smoked meats and which for some people is no big deal, but when you work with something that literally the word translates to burn in and you need to burn the, you know, the, and there's a lot mm -hmm. of smoke. I can't have candles in the house, anything like that. So, um, mm -hmm. so I can't teach anymore. I can't do it anymore. And um, it took me a long time to, to retool my whole studio and change my whole way of painting. Really major, major uh, uh, deal. Uh, I gave a lot of this stuff to Kathy Comera. Uh, Kathy O'Mara, she lives in, in Florida. A lot of you know her. Um, 
because she works with some of it and it doesn't affect her. Um, I mean, I have thousands and thousands of dollars worth of material. It was really, really a big deal to, to switch out like that. But um, I wish I could teach it. I wish I could do it. I, I just, I just can't. Uh, and I talked with someone about it once and, and an, another artist and they said, you're still grieving for this. <laughs> and I thought that was brilliant because I do. I, and I see it. I see it in a, in a gallery and I'm like, oh my gosh, I still love it so much. And, and it's, it's just a, a beautiful thing. But Is it a form of a asthma kind of a reaction or? or is it, it, it's like an, it's like an asthmatic reaction that it, that it sets off in me. And yeah, I've always wanted to do it. And I was wondering because I do have asthma. So I wasn't sure if I could. So, so, you know, I had a great ventilation system and a lot of people do it. You have to have a ventilation system. And, and, and I had you know, giant fans over my, my table. It's just, a, and there might be some people that have a reaction to it, but for me, it's, 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 um, I mean, there are always safety, safety precautions you take with any art making, with any kind of um, adverse materials that aren't watercolor, right? So you have to be careful with anything, but this is, a more specific thing to me genetically than it is a disclaimer for the material. I could talk about it forever, but I don't, I couldn't actually demonstrate it for you. Um, but so, so always making things about nature, always making paintings about my emotions and feelings. This is very abstract expressionist. I'm, I'm still doing encaustic. And I moved to South Carolina. I'm teaching public school in South Carolina. My husband and I had this goal of being semi-retired and he, wa he wasn't loving his job and I was teaching in, in a school system that was fallacious. And he said, I think I wanna start my own business. And I said, I'm with you right there, I'll be a secretary. <laughs> um, I can't type, computer <laughs> makes me, um, I'm introverted. <laughs> painfully shy, but I was on team Steve. So I became his secretary. I was terrible at it. And eventually we discovered we needed to hire a real secretary and I got sent home. <laughs> and so for the first time in my life, I am a full-time artist and working in my studio all day, every day. And nothing but the dog to distract me. And I was having a blast. I was doing everything I could to put myself out there. So this is how this painting started. I, I was in a festival and I would, the teacher in me is still going on. I, I'm not um, teaching in public school anymore, but I've got private students and, and that, that teacher mentality is there. So I had a giant beach ball and on each color of the beach ball, there's a word, one of the elements or principles of art. And it's bounced around this big festival. And if you catch it and it says color, you shout out a color and I have to paint with that color. And this painting turned in, into this after when I took it home and, and polished it up a little bit. At the very last second, I was really tired and it's hot in South Carolina and outside. And the last person said, big purple heart. And I don't really do big hearts and things like that, but for the heck of it, I did. And a few days later, I meet the same guy again. And I realized I had met him once before. He's a Purple Heart veteran and he puts Purple Hearts in all of his artwork because he makes art now. And he comes to all the art schools. And I had met him at one of the art schools I was teaching a program. And he was getting his portrait painted by one of my former students. Mm -hmm. And I just thought the serendipity and the of it all and the interconnectedness of it all. So that gave me the idea how, how to finish this painting from the hot mess that it was. What, the, what is your medium? Is that acrylic? So that's, a, that's mostly acrylic. So, so at this point, um, the, the encaustic was becoming a bit of an issue and I would do some acrylic. I, you can't do a caustic out in public as much like this. So for this occasion, I did the big acrylic and I would do acrylic with students. And so, so I, I set some goals for myself. I'm really working hard to be a professional artist. I've got this time. One of the goals was to be at City Gallery in Charleston, which is mm -hmm. 
Charleston City Gallery on the waterfront. The first time I was a tourist here, I said, someday that's going to be where I want to be. And that's really important. Set that goal and reach really high. So the painting to the right is a close up shot. And the paint that you can see it in the, in the far back. So that's like 40, 40, 40 inches by 36 inches, something like that, 48, 48 by 36. And it's acrylic with a little bit of collage mixed in. And I was fortunate enough to get into City Gallery three times. This was a piece I did originally for a Nawa show about a South Carolina chapter Nawa show. We were doing inspiration from Pat Conroy. And this is called Prince of Tides. And it's more about his love for nature in the low country. And this was a piece I got in a show at City Gallery that was a show called Dialogue in Black and White. The curator chose 60 artists, 30 black, 30 white. We paired off into teams and we were given a theme to make artwork to. Our theme was voting. And I did a survey first. I asked everybody I knew, what, what do you think of when you think of voting rights? And they said, mm -hmm. women's suffrage or civil rights. I made this painting because there was a lot happening in history at the time. So down the bottom, you can see my nod to women's suffrage. I call that picket signs and petticoats. And then the middle one is, uh, white shirts and black ties mm -hmm. it was Martin Luther King and his associates marching so dignified in their beautiful black tailored suits at the time. And the last one is zero tolerance, t-shirts and zero tolerance, because you can't see it here because it's so small, but this was done at the time of Parkland. And these kids were so passionate and protesting in their t-shirts that just said Parkland across the front and it didn't need to say anymore because people understood. But the backstory to that is at that time when the voting age is 18, because we knew all these Parkland kids were gonna come out and vote because they were really mad and they wanted to be heard, they were trying to change the voting age mm -hmm. to 21 so these kids couldn't vote. Mm -hmm. So I tried to make this look like my favorite game from a from childhood about shoots and ladders and how you make it so high up but one false move you get slid down that ladder do you remember that game from when you were a kid and I wanted it to look like an aerial view of a game table but it says across the top this is not a game and these are copies actual copies of of um newspapers, one from the town I was born in and one from South Carolina and another one from more current because at the same time, South Carolina and the federal government were in a lawsuit against each other about, the, about voting rights and it was all current. So the biggest part is the current part and it's all an encaustic. It's 36 by 40. And this was the last piece I did. It took me a very, very long, usually I could make something in a day because it's so immediate, but this took me um, almost six months. And it's the last piece I made. It's such an epic piece. For me, it's not something anybody's gonna wanna buy. It, it made part of the advertisement for the show. Uh, we, had, we had dinner parties in the gallery and, and discussions with all the civic leaders. It was just a really important time in my life. And, a really important time to feel like I could be an advocate and do something. It's different from the nature stuff. Uh, and it was a pretty amazing piece of encaustic that now lives under my bed. But hmm. uh, another goal I set was to get to art fields. And I did that twice. Again, this is encaustic. And these are two different pieces. And, and because I was doing the portraits still about nature and life and, you know, big hippie thoughts, but one on the left is Mother Nature and having a conference with Father Time who's up there in her head. And this one is 
on the right is almost 10 years old. I made it on my 50th birthday when I realized my child was 25 and how fast he went from boy to man. And so the first one is more blank, just a little outline of a person. And the last one is all black. Mm -hmm. And there's a halfway point where the man is looking back at his life and the looking towards and this last piece, the last portrait here, he's looking a little, little bit blunt. And the boy is the only one that's got the audacity to look right at the camera when you mm -hmm. see it. And it, it reads like a timeline and it raises up so that it's like an arc of life. And um, this one, eventually I will give to that son, but right now it lives in my office. When I had an office, it lived in my office. Uh, sort of remind me about the fleetingness of time. Like I need a reminder anymore, but <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's kind of a big deal painting to me. We, you know, we, I think we all have those big deal paintings and, and these are some of them. And so to get that kind of recognition of art fields, do y'all know what art fields is? Uh, Denise Farmer had a piece there this year and uh, it's a it's a festival in Florida. I mean, in a, in a South Carolina, but it, it incorporates Florida, Georgia, North Carolina, Kentucky, uh, 13 Southern states. And you try out, you, if you get in, you have a chance at a $50,000 prize. Wow. It takes over the whole town of Lake City. So the barbershop, the uh, mattress store, the clothing store, everybody has five to 10 pieces of artwork. And now this town is alive so much so that it supports a whole um, hotel. There's a really, bold gallery that will show a lot of artwork. If you feel like you're in a New York City art gallery, it's got the cement floor and the high ceilings and the fancy lighting. Uh, put it on your list of things to study because you qualify to try out living in Florida and it is a, a beautiful event just to go to. And now I was trying to get involved more. We put a, we had a, a, an award to a person who tried out and was in the show and was not a, a winner from from the judge's choice or from the people's choice but we chose her to be a, a not one member and that's kind of a really cool thing so art fields check it out so that was one of my goals so so here i am in in, in the city gallery can i hey can i ask fields and, yeah yeah uh, my screen is frozen i don't know if it's just me it's just you <laughs> okay, how do, how do I unfreeze it? Okay, let me see what we're doing here. Um, okay, who's talking? Bo. Oh. oh, hi, Bo. You have your um, computers uh, frozen. I don't know. You can either leave and come back in. I'll let you back in. Um, okay. Or or you can actually, um, sometimes it just comes back up. It could be your internet has do dropped. So check to make sure you still have an ignorant um, internet signal. Yeah, I, I wouldn't come out, uh, get off it. Uh, maybe because we can see you, we can hear you. Maybe you want to tune in on your cell phone until the image is back. So yeah. you can hear me, but you just can't see what I'm showing? Okay. You're on mute now. But um, anyway, uh, Bo, just um, check to make sure your internet is working. It, chances are it might have just dropped and then I'll come back on. You're, you're on mute, so I can't hear you. Okay, I'll try to go onto my phone. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So I am working from my studio home and I'm trying to be out there, putting myself out there, doing everything that all the art gurus tell you to do and all the things I know to do as a business person to promote my art. And, and I'm not having as great a time in South Carolina. I, I, Felt like I got a little more recognition when I lived in Massachusetts, but Encaustic was more known up there, and it's a smaller state and a little closer, you know, um, knit art community. And, and South Carolina felt a little spread out, so I started my own gallery. I said, "I'm just going to build it, and they will come." And <laughs> I, I, I was going to do it. So um, one of my besties in college and I used to say fabulon as fabulous and awesome 
funny word, made up word. And I said, I want to build it like a place, like a utopian place. Fabulon, isn't it awesome? And don't you want to be there? I called it a center for art and education because I wanted it to be part gallery, part school. And I didn't want you to feel like you were in one place or the other. So we had giant science lab tables set up in between the art displays. And we taught classes for kids and adults and some groups of people with extreme special needs. We, it, we had epic shows. It really was fabulous and awesome. It was big. It had an ugly floor, but it was amazing. I had my name in lights. I had my art on the wall. I got to talk with people about art all day long. I taught classes. We had these giant tables and lots and lots of supplies that I was able to have donated or that I bought myself and a lot of community interaction. It was in West Ashley, which is part of Charleston. And it's the sort of poor stepchild of South of, of Charleston. So it wasn't getting a lot of love at the time, but I got billboards for our artists. That's my work up at the top. I got called a player. <laughs> This is, this is the um, front of the, of the gallery. At one time, we painted it a couple of times because it was an old, decrepit kind of building. Excuse me, the interruption. Uh, we cannot have the cell phone computer. At the, that's why we hear Bo. Bo, we hear this uh, noise. It's an echo, Bo. You got your two things on. Hear me. Bo, can you hear us? So. Yeah, I'm trying to turn it off. OK. Thank, Thank you. you. Sorry for the interruption. You can continue. It's OK. So, so it was really, it really was fabulous and awesome. And I got to host some really hippy dippy shows and, and different things that are important to me. Uh, so now we're at 2016. You all remember 2016. And I'm hosting a show called How Artists Respond to Racism. And the mayor came, we had famous artists there, had artists from all over the country. This gentleman on the floor playing the bongos started the Black Lives Matters movement in Charleston. He has a program where he goes back and forth to Ghana and, and gets these drums and he goes to the schools and teaches them meditation, and drumming, and, and is just an advocate for all the things that I love and, and all the things that are important to me. And, um, and I told him about the show and he said, I'll be there with my drums. And then this friend of ours from the symphony and said, I just happen to have my saxophone in the car. Do you mind if I run out and play along with you? And, and I thought, well, how is this gonna be? Drumming and, and, and louder music in a, in a gallery when people are having these conversations about racism and looking at the art and and it was just amazing you see there's a small child playing the drums here too and, and the drum circle was never quiet but there was a point where people started to talk to the beat of the drum and it it just the whole show took on its its, its, its whole persona the woman behind him is a batik artist which was my first love and she's an amazing woman. Her name is Erin King Comer. She's, she's one of the most famous boutique artists. She's got work in the Smithsonian. And she came in and I met her at the door and she just took my hand and looked around and said, yes, yes, yes. Right. That's all the validation I need there. It was just really amazing. At this show was, was work by this woman on the right. Her name is Janet Braun Ryan. It's in, she's 90 something years old. She was a freedom rider and she sent me a piece of work for the show. And she said, I can't believe we're still protesting this shit. <laughs> and and it, it, it was amazing piece that she had. And this was a, another time she came back to the gallery and put her postcards that she made very large scale 
political postcards that were traveling the country and she would have people come to the show and make postcards and then she would add those to the traveling collection. The other piece in the show about how artists respond to racism was this piece here. And it's the gentleman playing the drums who jumped across the police barrier at the College of Charleston to protest the flag. So it was, it was Janet Braun Reynolds, who was a freedom rider in, in way back and the March on Washington paintings and this piece all at the same time in the show. There was a hundred pieces in the show and it was, it was just very epic. I was very glad that I did it. I got to meet some amazing people and work with amazing people. This was a show we did called 53, 63, 73. And the lovely lady in the lower corner is 73 at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did a show call, called Where We Were, Where We Are, Where We're Going, the theme, and just labeled it 53, 63, 73. The two ladies and myself, we are all now now our members. And here are we again. I'm looking a little tired here and walls are a little empty. It's my secretary in the lower right hand corner. And the woman in the upper corner is the artist Lisa Lindahl, who um, you don't know, but you think you, but you do know her because she invented the jog bra. So I'm looking a little tired here and the walls are empty because earlier I got an eviction notice and they took down my beautiful building. I didn't I'm own so, it, I was I'm just sorry, renting broke it up. from the landlord. Susan, can you say oh. that again? You broke up a little bit, your voice. I, I said I was tired and the walls are empty because I had just recently gotten an eviction notice. I didn't own the building. I was just renting mm. it. And they tore it down. So it was trying to be an, an, a force in, of art in the community. Mm -hmm. And we had shows with two and 300 people at a time. It, we, the, the neighbors were letting us park in their business parking lots. And it was just a very um, little epicenter of art in the, in the community. And we were planning for the next year. And I mean, I was literally on the computer with a Zoom call with a woman who uh, was gonna be doing our, some of our marketing plan and FedEx came in and handed me an eviction notice. <laughs> you got 30 days to vacate the premises. So we. We did what women do. We packed it all up and we, I moved it to my house. What did, um, what did they turn it into? It is a laboratory for research. It's like four stories high and, and it's part of the place that was behind us. So once again, I found myself sent home and I'm in my studio now and filled my attic with everything that was left over from the gallery. I brought as much as I could into my room. So here's my, my organization, my beautiful space. And I'm teaching kids and I'm teaching adults and I'm rearranging my stuff. And I've got a white sofa in my art studio. I don't know what I was thinking, but I loved it. I loved being a teacher. I loved working from home and having the dog and the kids here, but. I got to do some really cool projects. This young man here is profoundly deaf and autistic. So he signs to himself. Communication was a real challenge, but we talked through art. So in the center picture, he's diagramming the night sky mm -hmm. on a specific date. And you can give him any date, past, present, or future. And he thinks for a minute, and he moves his hand and then he starts and he diagrams wow. the whole thing out and then labels them in Latin. And we started wow. a little project where I was working with other artists to make a painting and then he would diagram this, the constellations incorporated into them. 
So eventually this is still out there somewhere that maybe we'll, I'll do a show with a bunch of artists and his work. Um, Sounds to me like you can create an entire documentary for PBS. <laughs> <laughs> so now that I'm working from home in my studio, and I can't do the encaustic anymore, I just can't. And so I'm trying to embrace the acrylics and I have all this acrylic stuff because uh, it came home with me from the gallery from when we were teaching classes, from when I could you know, write off all the supplies. And so I could be a poster child for golden paint too. Trying to embrace the, the acrylics. That's a piece I did with acrylic. And I'm trying to get it to be really thin and really transparent and layers like the encaustic. I had a big show. This is this is uh, when that piece first got launched before it went to City Gallery. So the timelines are the lock in some of my pictures, but so it's the end of the year. My gallery's been closed for almost a year. People are still calling me Fabulon when I run into them in the grocery store. People are emailing me constantly. You know, me, me, me. Teach me a class. Get, teach my kid, and and I'm and I decided I'm going to have a show for myself. And I had a little gallery space. Uh, an office co-working space and she'd asked me to curate some art which was great because it got to be a big closet for all the art that was left in the gallery and I could change it around as often as I wanted to and I said I'm gonna have a show for myself and, and it, it, for an introverted person it's kind of difficult and to get out of the house and when you're in the house all the time now working and but I said I'm really gonna put my, myself out there and so I put on my best party dress and I made the party and it was very lovely, very well received. My first time out in public. So I called it Soto Voce, which is Italian for soft voice. And I thought that's a good way to start. At the gallery, I had that little space there. I had a show for a woman who does large scale palette knife paintings. And ever since I was telling people I can't do the encaustic anymore, they kept saying, try this cold wax, try this cold wax. You'll like cold wax, it's cold wax. It's, and I, it's not the same thing. It's cold <laughs> wax. It's just not the same thing. I'm still grieving for the <laughs> encaustic. I don't want anything to do with this cold wax crap. Oh, excuse me. And so, <laughs> so, but I'm the hostess of the show and, I, and, and, and the woman is doing acrylic palette knife and, I, and a lot of people aren't proficient with palette knife, so I called my artist and craftsman store and said, will you come bring some palette knives and put up a little booth and talk about, you know, still trying to get that community thing going and, and, and brought them in. They, they said, yes, and we'll bring some cold wax. I was like, all right. And then I had to try it because again, I'm the hostess and I have to play nice in the sandbox. So I tried it and I loved it so much but I just wasn't ready for it before this day. I went home and I made the piece on the right. And it was a game changer for me. It was a, it was, you know, it was a life, it was a life changing, game changing, art changing thing for me. So if you get a chance to try something new, try it. I don't know why I was so afraid of it. I think because I thought it would disappoint me that it wasn't encaustic and it's not, and it's nothing like it. It's more like school pace and furniture polish. It doesn't have the same transparency, right, as the encaustic. It does. It can. It really can. It can polish right. things up. It can, and I paint with it really heavy. So here's the next piece I did, and this has got a lot of layers and a lot of palette knife and really thick. And if you look back far enough, you can see in the middle there's a little bit of a circle thing happening. And I didn't plan that. And often I don't plan what comes out in the painting in those respects. I mean, I said I'm going to make a painting and use this color palette. I'm going to you know, activate the canvas, see what I see and, and start to see what comes out. But it's always nature based and, and fragile ecosystem based. And this circle came in at the same time that I'm feeling, oh, I finally come full circle. I, I found the medium that I need to work with. And I had another show and this time I had a curator. That's a really big deal for me to be in a, in a show, a solo show where I just didn't hang it myself and hey, it's all about me. I hired this amazing woman who is, 
was one of the only other encaustic people I ever met. She doesn't do it anymore either. I don't know why, but she does um, almost miniature shadow box type things that are, um, they're pulleys and systems and it, it's not like miniature uh, interior design. It's, it's just miniature uh, um, sculptures are just amazing. So she took a real risk of how she put things together. Here it's all studio uh, salon style, but then she took an another section and she spread it all, all across a wall, like a timeline. And you can see I, I work in pairs a lot. There's pairs here, but she separated the pairs. And that was a, that was a, a, a bold move too. And, and it worked, it really worked. And people bought pairs of paintings even though they weren't shown together. So that was pretty cool. I was very, very grateful for that. This show I called Shift because I'm shifting into a whole new medium and, and I'm feeling like something's shifting in my life too. I'm working, this is a huge piece now, all in, all in cold wax. So I buy it by the gallon now. I, I got a little tiny sample jar when I first started, but now I buy it by the gallon. I'm on my third gallon. And this is one of my favorite pieces. This went to New York with Nawa and it's a, called Global Warming and it's about that encroaching blight and, and the threat of, of nature. And I framed it, it's on, it's on a wood panel and I, and I wired it so that you could hang it either way. So the, the pretty blue sky at the top and the doom and gloom at the bottom or the other way around. And then hoping that it'll inspire people to have some control over how the story goes. And then I was at that little gallery space where I, where I was co, uh, where the co-workers were and I was curating and I got a call from Nawa <laughs> and I never heard of them. And I couldn't understand why I had never heard of them, but I had never heard of them. And they asked me if I could do a show there and it didn't work out, but I said, hey, I'm joining this, this Nawa group because they're trying to and I got in and then I got volunteered to be the membership coordinator. And again, I'm not good at that secretary stuff, but uh, I am a good cheerleader and I love Nawa. So I'm doing Nawa stuff and I'm in my studio and this is what it looks like now. That first picture when it was all pr pretty and perfect and orderly is now gotten chaotic because I have to change my set every so often for students and I'm not used to having such a small space relative to what I had in the gallery. This is a two car garage and I've got two of those giant science tables in there and I still find I'm tripping over stuff. Um, and I'm really feeling that shift coming on. Really, really feeling something major is gonna happen. I think of myself as a relatively intuitive person and I know what my needs are and what I need to do next. And this gives me that confidence to jump at something when I get the opportunity, like, hey, I'm going to open a gallery when, you know, so I did. But this was a different kind of feeling, like I just, something had to change. And if I tell you that it's March of 2020, you understand. So I was once again sent to my room, <laughs> which is where I wanted to be in the first place. And now I can't take students anymore. And as soon as I said, oh, students, y'all have to go home, we're, at, we're in quarantine. I knew I would never, I never teach again. I'm done, I'm done. And it's hard because I define myself as an artist and a teacher. And when you have that other, other, because everybody understands what a, what a teacher is, but not everybody understands what an artist is. So I had to say, I'm no longer going to be a teacher and I'm going to be an artist. And I was craving organization. So now I'm activating the canvas in a different way. And I'm painting still, this is oil and cold wax. You can see up in the upper left corner, how thick it is. And I'm, and I'm changing everything in in my studio, because I don't leave there. I'm there all day long, I'm cleaning and organizing and reclaiming it because it's not gonna be for students anymore. It's gonna be just for me. And I use the oil paint mixed with the cold wax. So I, I have these giant baker trays 
and a rack and I slide the trays back and forth into the rack as I need them. And I can see every color I have in, in oil paint. And then my favorite thing to work with the oil, with the uh, oil and cold wax are these RNF paint sticks, pigment sticks. They're um, obscenely expensive. And recently my art supply store closed and I got them all, a lot of them for 70% off. So I have a lot of them, but I use a lot of them and you can see I wear them out, but that's my favorite thing to work with. And this is a piece I did that was all with them and you can scratch into them and make layers with them. And then I think there might be a tiny bit of cold wax, clear cold wax and I just use a little polish on that. So Nawa's picking up and I'm doing a lot of stuff with Nawa. This is the um, Pat Conroy show and I got on the cover of Carolina Arts Magazine, which is a magazine for North Carolina, South Carolina art, Guy Stellar, and he does a lot of stuff. He was great with my gallery and I made the cover, which is kind of a big deal. So I was pretty pleased with that. And Nawa has been very good to me. This was on the right was a show with the South Carolina chapter and I won a prize. I've never won a prize before. I won a prize, I'm so proud. And then you can see me with my Florida girls and um, Lisa Cullen from South, from South Carolina. And I won another prize in the same year. So it was, it was great validation. I think I think NAWA is just a stellar, stellar organization and a chance to exhibit and put yourself out there and exhibit and reach high. And this was in a Florida show because you invited all of us South Carolina people to be in a show. But at the same time, I was sending in my application for Florida because I want to be a member of all the chapters. And this won me a prize too. So three prizes in, in a year and a half, I was sailing. This was one of the best things I ever did and the best thing to come from Nawa. I got to meet Fran Gardner. And Fran Gardner introduced me to Bo Wild. So I'm a happy girl. I went on a retreat. So I'm in my studio by myself, where I want to be, I'm happy. And Fran says, you should go on a retreat. And I'm introverted and shy. I don't need a retreat. I don't need sisterhood. I don't need all these people around me. And, and I went, and if you ever get a chance to go on a retreat, go. If you get a chance to go on a retreat with Fran Gardner, go. She's amazing. And it was a game changer for me. I had this huge space and I made all that pile of work. And here's a piece about the flowers in battle. This is all oil and cold wax and that pigment stick and really heavy layers. And there's just something not right about the flowers. They're they're here, they're there, they're everywhere. They're kind of putrid in color and they're, they're not grounded. And now this is my studio. So I'm here, I'm feeling brave. I'm feeling still something's gonna shift a little bit. And after pandemic, my husband and I decide we're gonna move to a tiny house. It's really a shed on stilts. And this is my studio. So I had a two car garage and I moved to this. There's those, those science tables that were in the gallery that were in my studio. And we took one of them with us. And I took a workshop with Fran about creativity and how creativity is in you. It's not what you have. And I said, I'm, I'm starting to see what I'm gonna take with me on my, uh, on my new house and what, and she says, just set your studio up right now the way you're gonna use it when you move. So for, for five months, I had a small studio, uh, my, a small space in my big studio that mimicked what I was gonna, and I was reducing it and taking stuff away and saying, this is all I can have. I only have this 10 by two foot table. That's all I have. And then I'm sitting on the kitchen table taking this photo. And to the left is my refrigerator and to the right is the, is the chairs and the TV and at my feet is the dog. So. This is it. I have to fit everything into two by 10 and then under the table and on the wall. It, it doesn't look like this anymore. And um, um, right now there's a painting tray on the, 
on the stove and the dining the, the kitchen table has a couple of paintings on it and there's probably paint on that table too but um for the most part that's my studio but i get to look at this out the door because the piece of property we bought is an abandoned palm tree farm and there's 1500 palm trees and this is a piece of work i made we just moved in in december i made this in january and this is mother nature and i was preparing for a, a, another event in my life so some of those themes are coming into this and you can see the the ode to the trees so i'm in my tiny house and it's not getting that tiny as fast as i thought it was because i got to go in march and spend an entire month plus in the land of my people this is ireland and i am really irish and i got a residency which i never would have done if i hadn't gone on that retreat but i applied for a residency and i got it in ireland you live there for a month you help the artist who who runs it in her gallery if the doorbell rings you run downstairs and you you greet people if you're upstairs in the studio most of the time and then you live upstairs on the third floor and on your three days off you get to explore ireland and it was a game changer again in my life and it has affected my work This piece, you can see the relationship between this and this. While I was in Ireland, or in pre preparation for Ireland, I started studying some of my family genealogy. And I knew a little bit about it, but my family is so small, I, I didn't think I'd find much, but I found the town in Ireland where they lived. And I said, I just need to stand in that town. I just need to be on the ground and, and pose in front of that street sign. But I found the cemetery where my great, great grandparents were buried. And I stood in the remains of the church where my great grandfather was christened and his parents were married. And I thought, this, can't, this trip can't get any better. I'm making art, I'm meeting artists, I'm meeting people, I'm seeing this gorgeous country. And now I've had this genealogy experience. And I went down the street to a store that I had heard about, a little convenience store that also had my maiden name on it. And I walked in and started babbling to the person behind the counter who said, you don't want to talk to me, you want to talk to the man. And he brought out his 96 year old father who, is my relative neat and i never in my life would i have expected that that would have happened and and everything that i intended to do when i got to ireland and planned on doing in ireland became all about my family ties and i've never in my life felt attached to a, a place in a physical way that i did to ireland so this is a piece called our roots run deep and it's about my family and as if we were flowers Again, the flowers are always working way. And so if we were flowers and, and the bulbs are the generations to come or the and, and the roots are reaching out and and so here's a piece I did in Ireland too, but but this is this is more what I typically do, and this is what really spoke to me through Ireland. Um, we were talking a little bit in the beginning how important it was to do this kind of slideshow just to put yourself out there. But for me, it was really more deeply personal because in order to prepare for this, I had to go through my whole entire life and, and pull out these slides and pull out these pieces to make the slideshow. And I just encourage you all to do it at some point in, in your life, just because it's a great thing to see and to remind yourself and, and to see how interconnected it all is. And and as, as an artist, we talk about mission state and body of work. And when you put your whole life out there, you see how it's your core of who you are as much as what you do. And that's, this is the, the testament to it. And all that organization that I was trying to get in some of the paintings during pandemic and the opposed to the stuff I was doing in the festivals, it's all sort of come together. And that's me and the marks I make. Susan, you are so creative 
and so organized. I'm so impressed. <laughs> I love how you combine the roots when you've been to Ireland and how you literally show the roots on, on the work that you look at. Uh, I think it's fabulous. You go in depth in whatever you do. And uh, I would, uh, as they say, never say never because you said, oh, you don't want to do the cold wax. And once you were <laughs> fed on with it, you embraced it. So I really think that you are going to teach again, even if it's a workshop or whatnot, but it's mm -hmm. in you. And I'm sure you're going to teach again. I don't doubt that at all. <laughs> But well, I would definitely do a workshop for, for, for Nawa, Florida and, and any, anything to do with Nawa. And, and there's probably something that I can, I can put a workshop together for. Oh my God, you can teach anything you want, your organizational skills, your cold wax, anything you want, because you are amazing. You go in depth in everything you do and take it to such a level. We've been delighted with your presentation and please, it's open to each one of us to give a comment I would like to hear what all our viewers are thinking of and what they felt because it's been delightful. And we really thank you for doing this presentation today and thank continued you. success to you. I appreciate that. I think really this awesome. piece, I think, I think this piece is amazing. Um, did you take a, uh, the cold wax and the acrylic or oil and blend it all together here or with that? I did the base layer as acrylic. And then I built up the collage layer. So there's string and paper and torn up pieces of books in, in the bottom section of it. And then I went over all of it with that RNF pigment stick. And so it, Incredible. it, it gives it some of a stained glass look and some layer to it. And, uh, and, I, and I blended a little of it with the cold wax. It's incredible, love this piece. Um, yeah, it's been a, you had an amazing art to, art journey and I can see it keep going. This is incredible. Thank you, thank you. You've come a long way from your mom's doodling, yeah. which is yeah. part of your logo. <laughs> yeah. And you are now, so you really were inspired that very first time. I don't know how old you were. I'm sure you were extremely young, but it was nice that your mom it, it captured this in you, motivated you to pursue it later on in life. Beautiful. Susan, I want to acknowledge you for the courage I've seen in this slide presentation to have uh, so much success. And well, let's talk about your love of acoustics and it, losing that. It takes a great deal of courage to come back and open your heart again to another avenue. And you did that. And not only did you do it once, you've done it several times through your journey. And that's very admirable. And what a role model that is for other artists, no matter male or female, is once you've been crushed to get up and start again. And it shows so beautifully in this last piece because it's all there. You've laid it on the line. Thank you, Molly. I, I appreciate that. We'll take that to heart. And and um, and I and I mean it sincerely when I say a lot of it came from from Nawa and the people that I met through Nawa. That was a was a, a big a big life changer for me. We're did doing you find? Here. Did you find that um, when you were looking up your family history, or you found some people from your he family history that there were other artists? Because that seems to be a common thread. A lot of times we come from a family of artists. So I was hoping that that might be the case. Uh, there was one cousin of my father's who was a graphic designer in before computer days of graphic design. So I'm, I'm trying to travel down that thread and see if I can't meet some of the people that I wouldn't have met yet that might have some stories or some information about him. What I found mostly is that the rugged landscape of Ireland and what it took to live there and some of the people that left Ireland and came to the town that I was born in, came from the Great Blasket Islands, which are islands off of the coast of Ireland and the Dingle Peninsula area. Not the, not the Aran Islands that are in the movies now, but, but quite similar. And they, they made everybody leave in 1953 because it was just too harsh of a shoreline they didn't have electricity out there. And mm -hmm. 
they were very remote and isolated. And the young people always left and went to Springfield. And then when they closed the island, all the people who couldn't stay or have someone to stay with right there on the Dingle Peninsula left and went to Springfield too. Mm. Same neighborhood that my father and my was born in, my grandfather was born in, and his father left Ireland and landed in. And it was a the Irish section of Springfield, Massachusetts, and they called it Hungry Hill. All you Irish go there. And that's where I came from. And that's the backstory to, to why they're there. And that to me is, is, is artist gold in some ways. That's, I come from that fortitude. I come from that tenacity. And I come from that reinventing yourself. And that instead of, instead of looking at it as a, as a detriment, you know, I, I, I feel the beginning of, of that pride and, and, and thank you again, Lolly, for your comment and, and, and Annabelle too, because that's, that's a reminder. That's what I got from the Irish people. And that's um, what's going to carry me forward to the next chapter. Uh, next week's my birthday and I'm going to be 60 years old. And I'm, oh, <laughs> I'm, right. uh, Happy um, birthday. I'm, thank you. I'm sort of feeling it a little bit, you know, <laughs> and to re causing me to reflect. And, and now I feel stronger. I feel, I feel stronger. I, I don't know if you check the um, chats when we do these talks. Uh, uh, Carson wrote, Susan, excellent um, presentation. Uh, you are humble, driven, and deeply spiritual. Carson's another lovely person I got to meet through this. She's a NAWA member too, but I don't know if she's, I keep telling her to join, join Florida chapter. So. <laughs> well, that. it's been a wonderful presentation. I really Thank appreciate it. Thank you for it. your time. Very it feels like a gift to me. Really I does. also would like to add that all of us encounter uh, situations that we can no longer do. If we were joggers, we can no longer jog. So we walk. And then you have time to stop and literally smell the flowers. So in life, you have to embrace whatever it is that uh, we encounter. And um, everything is like layers, like in your art, you have all these layers, all this background that you did with encaustic, you are applying daily to your work. So it's all layers and we're just transferring uh, the media we're working on. So uh, this is the beauty about creativity. And they say that uh, with age, you can forget certain things, you can lose certain abilities but the creativity they say remains fresh. And this is a beauty of a gift that we have because we continue at it. Everybody can be an artist as Picasso said, but still persevering, continuing, embracing the new techniques is what we have to do. And you set this example. And um, I think it's been very uh, motivational. You could even write a book about this or do a video. Uh, because it's extremely motivational and uh, we applaud you and we're looking forward to a workshop or another presentation because I want to book each one of you for different times of the year and so um, continued success to you and to all stay creative and it's been delightful we've Thank enjoyed it so thoroughly have a great day everybody you made my day bye bye-bye thank you